Titles. <laughs> Don't worry about it, honey. Next Saturday night, we'll see an American film. We're skipping next Saturday. Pete's going to be in Santa Barbara at the Valens Convention. I don't know, Gladys. I don't think I'll go this year. Oh, Pete, you owe it to them to go. After all, you're one of their big heroes. Pete Porter was a war hero? Well, of course. Ernie, didn't you know? Go on, Pete. Tell him about it. Oh, Gladys, you know I don't like to... Talk about that. Now, don't be so bashful. Go on, Pete. Tell him. Gladys, if you don't mind, I'd rather <clears throat> skip it. That's ridiculous. Ernie wants to hear it. Go on. What did he do? What did he do? Why, he practically single handed. Gladys. Pete was on patrol in the middle of the steaming jungle. Suddenly, the silence was broken by the sound of two bullets. <laughs> Pete quickly dropped to the ground behind some bushes. Then suddenly, from the distance, he heard a voice. Hello, Yankee! How you pal? How so? How things in Boston, California? How Dodgers doing? How Mara Moreau? You can't help me. Oh, Gladys, come on. But my Pete was too smart to give away his position. That's not true. I had just never been to Boston, California with Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Crawling on his belly, Pete outflanked the entire patrol of snipers, disarmed every one of them, and took away the general samurai sword single-handed. Okay, Gladys, that's enough. Now, you better clear this stuff out of here or we'll be late for the movie. Okay. That's my hero. Oh, how thrilling. We really owe you a big debt of gratitude. Oh, forget it. I was only doing my duty. Come on, Come on Peg. You know, that's the most exciting story I've ever heard. Oh, well, I get goosebumps every time I think about it. We're lucky he's here. Oh, true. Do you realize how dangerous... Oh, <laughs> I thought you spent the whole war clerking in a PX. <laughs> What's this New Guinea bit? All right, it was New Jersey. <laughs> this whole story you told Gladys was a big fib. Well, Ernie, if you spent the whole war clerking in a PX, would you admit it to Peggy? Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Every man wants to be a hero to his wife. Right. But what a fantastic story. It all started when Gladys found this samurai sword in my trunk. Don't tell me they sold samurai swords at the PX. Oh, I wanted off the top sergeant in an all-night poker game. If you think that story about New Guinea was fantastic, let me tell you about this poker game. We started to play at about... Ready, Ernie? <laughs> Thank you, doll. Excuse me. Pardon me, miss. Uh, do you have the time? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not wearing my watch. <laughs> I never noticed. I was so attracted by your pretty face, I didn't even bother to look at your wrist. Thank you. Oh, can I buy you a candy bar? No, thank you. I never accept candy from strangers. Well, why be strangers? My name's Tommy Garfield. What's yours? Popcorn. <laughs> That's a funny name. You're awfully fresh. Probably a lot fresher than the popcorn. <laughs> Say, why don't we take the popcorn, go up and sit in the balcony? It's nice and cozy up there. Why, I've got a good mind to go right in there and tell my husband about you. He'd probably come out here and punch you right in the nose. All right, lady, all right. 
He's just the man who can do it, too. He was a big war hero. Well, no offense. <laughs> What's keeping you? You're missing the worst part of the picture. Don't look now, Pete. But that man at the counter tried to pick me up. Oh, he did, did he? <laughs> a good punch right in the nose. Pete, not that one. That one. <laughs> I wanted to know what time it was. Oh, uh, 10, 17 and a half. <laughs> Thanks. Any time, uh, pal. <laughs> He was just trying to find out what time it was. You can't punch a man in the nose for that, Gladys. Oh, of course not, darling. I, I shouldn't have even bothered you over a ridiculous thing like that. Yeah, it was kind of ridiculous. After all, he just asked you what time it was. I ask strangers that three or four times a day. Well, of course you do, Pete. It's a perfectly normal thing to do. Come on, sweetheart. I still wish it had been the little guy. <laughs> thinking and you're right I should have punched that guy in the nose <laughs> what guy oh that guy Pete you know something I forgot all about it why don't you forget it too and go to sleep sweetheart huh him in the nose. Honey, I'm sure you would have punched him in the nose if you'd been able to reach his nose to punch. Huh? That's right. <laughs> How come I didn't punch him in the stomach? I could reach that. No law says you gotta punch a man in the nose. You know something, Pete? I'm glad you didn't punch him in the nose. You could have hurt him. Good night. How can you sleep when you've got a coward for a husband? I wouldn't know, darling. I'm married to you. No, Piggy, I really am worried about Pete. Oh, forget it. He'll get over it. I've never seen him like this. He didn't sleep a wink last night. Hmm. How does this goulash taste to you? Hmm. Hmm, not bad. I didn't know Pete was so disturbed. I think he could use just a little sweet basil. I guess it's his pride that's wounded. What do you think I ought to do, Peggy? Add a pinch of paprika. <laughs> I mean, about Pete. <laughs> oh, don't bring it up. Put the whole incident out of your mind. But he keeps bringing it up. Oh, forget it. Don't answer him. Add a dash of salt. He'll soon forget it. Poor Pete. He wants so much to be a hero for me. you forget what happened at the movies last night? Well, I hate to let Gladys down. She thought I was a hero until last night. Well, just tell her you've changed. Tell her you've decided to embrace cowardice as a way of life. <laughs> I wish there was some way to show Gladys I'm really a hero, uh, uh, without getting hurt, of course. <laughs> You're serious, Pete. I know a guy who might be able to help. Who? A fellow named Charlie Fox. Runs a gym in Hollywood and doubles in the movies as a stuntman. Well, how can he help? Well, I think we might be able to work something out. Why don't we go down and talk to him? He's a very bright guy. Now, during a scuffle, 
to make it look authentic, I'll hit you a couple of times. Oh, well, is that necessary? I won't even actually hit you. We'll do it just like it's done in the movies. When I swing at you, you put your hand up to your chin. Here, I'll show it. Like that. Then I'll hit you in the palm and it'll look and sound just like I hit you right in the jaw. Are you ready? Well, okay. <laughs> What's the matter, Pete? I don't know, I guess my palm muscles have gotten kind of flabby. <laughs> well, I think we better rehearse the plan once more. Okay, it's late at night. I'm upstairs in bed. I hear you down in the living room making noises. I say to my wife, Gladys, honey, there's a prowler in the house. She says, oh dear, what'll we do? I say, don't worry, I'll handle it myself. Now I rush downstairs, followed by my wife, who witnesses our phony fight. <laughs> oh, come on, you can get closer than that. Here. Now try it. Oh. <laughs> now pick me up, Pete. Oh, oh, a little harder. Get closer. Oh, a little harder. Hold me back. See, okay? Now throw me through the door. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, how'd that look, Ernie? It was Dempsey and Purple all over again. I'll meet you at your house tonight at 11.30. Oh, it's certainly nice of you, Charlie. I hope we're not putting you out. Not at all. In fact, I'm going to be in your neighborhood tonight anyway. My wife's canasta club meets tonight, and I promise to pick her up at midnight. Hey, well, if you're not going to do anything till 11.30, why don't you come over to my place for a little two-handed gin? I'd love to. I tell you what, I'll give you my front door key, and you can show Charlie where I live. Great. Good. I'll Great. see you at 11.30. Well, thank, thank you, Charlie. Again, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> well, nice to have met you. Oh, uh, I better not. I got a fight tonight. <laughs> Took a saving pill. Oh, Gladys, at a time like this, why would you do a thing like that? Goulash kept me awake. There's a prowler in the house. Give him some goulash, that'll get rid of him. You better get up, Gladys. There's a prowler in the house. What? Now don't panic. I'll take care of the dirty rat. If you care to watch, you're invited. No such thing. Gladys, step aside. He, he may have a gun. Oh, a gun. That doesn't scare me. I have my two bare hands. I won't let you, Pete. It's too dangerous. Danger is my business. <laughs> I don't want you to be a hero, Pete. I love you the way you are. Oh, so you do think I'm a coward. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, Pete. Gladys, step aside. I'm going down there. Over my dead body. Oh, Gladys. <laughs> Hey, that was quick. Finish already? I didn't even start. What happened? I couldn't wake him up. I was in there for 20 minutes, kicking furniture, banging pots and pans, coughing. I did everything but set off firecrackers. <laughs> Boy, are they heavy sleepers. Well, what do we do now? 
I don't know about you, but I'm leaving. You can't. What about the fight? If I don't pick up my wife in five minutes, there'll be a real fight and she'll kill me. <laughs> Gladys, please let me go. I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> Gladys, I've got to do this for my own self-respect. Does it mean that much to you, Pete? Yes, it does. All right. But I'll go with you. Somebody in here, come out and fight like a man. I told you, he's gone. Come on, let's go back upstairs. Gladys, there's somebody in this house and we're gonna find him. find it hard to believe. I'd like to hear it. Well, you see, the original Prowler wasn't really a Prowler. He's a friend of Ernie's. His name is Charlie Fox, and he runs a gymnasium. Uh-huh. Well, I'm so glad she liked the potholders, Miss Petroni. How is Angela? All right, Mr. Petroni, let's go over it once more, huh? Now, you'll have your cousin at the restaurant at 7 o'clock sharp. Okay. Then I'll tell Pete that he's flirting with me. Uh-huh. Well, just tell your cousin that when Pete gets angry, to back down. That's all. Oh, Mr. Petroni, you'll never know how much I appreciate it. Well, you know how Pete feels. Uh-huh. Well, after tonight, he'll be back to my old Pete again. All right, we'll see you at the restaurant at... Se oh, here he comes, Mr. Petroni. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Gladys, that was a great idea, to dress up and go out to dinner. I feel better already. Good. I really do. A wonderful idea. You know what I feel like having? What? A Chinese dinner. <laughs> a Chinese dinner? Oh, Pete, I, I don't feel like having Chinese food tonight. I was thinking, why don't we go over to Petroni's? You always want to go to Petroni's, just because he named his daughter Gladys Maria Petroni. That has absolutely nothing to do with it. You know how fond he is of us, and he always gives us such a good service. But I feel like Chinese food. Don't you know a restaurant owner who named his daughter Gladys Toy Fong? <laughs> Pete, I have a perfect evening planned. How about Arling Chow's? Petroni's. I know Arling Chow's is good because all the Chinese truck drivers eat there. <laughs> Pete, Petroni's. How about 
Petroni. See? I know you'll enjoy yourself, honey. Not unless there's such a thing as Italian fortune cookies. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Hello, Mr. Petroni. Hello, Mr. Petroni. How are you this evening? Fine, thank you. This way, please. How's Angela? Oh, it's wonderful. Maria? Excellent. Felipe? Oh, he's excellent. Luigi? Oh, thank you very, very much. And Fred is wonderful. <laughs> I know everything will be satisfactory, Mrs. Porter. <laughs> well, what would you like, Pete? Egg foo young. Come on. Don't look now, but that man over there is winking at me. Some weeks it doesn't rain, but it pours. <laughs> he doesn't look like a winker to me, are you sure? Well, of course I am. Why would you doubt it? I wouldn't want to start any trouble if he just happens to be blinking his eyes. <laughs> There, he did it again. And again. Well, three times is the charm. <laughs> I don't mean to pry, but uh, why were you flirting with my wife? Look, Buster, I don't need to flirt with anybody's wife. That's an interesting sidelight, but it doesn't answer my question. Now look, are you, uh, are you trying to start some trouble or something? Is that what you want, trouble? Let me put it to you this way. Have you ordered your dinner yet? No, not yet. Why? Because you're about to get a mouth full of fist. <laughs> Just a second. No, don't get too hasty. I, I was wrong. I, I made a mistake. I, uh, I'm sorry. Take it easy now. Okay. Next time, you watch your step. Yeah, sure. That's not nice. <laughs> Pete, you were wonderful. <laughs> he was so much bigger than you. Well, I guess when you're angry, you, you forget about those things. <laughs> ah, you know, I kind of worked up an appetite. Gladys, why don't you order some minestrone? I'll go over to the buffet and see what's new in antipasto. <laughs> Mrs. Porter, I'm terribly sorry about the incident. Sorry? Oh, it worked like a charm. And Mr. Petroni, please thank your cousin for me. Tell him he did a wonderful job. You'll never know how much I appreciate it. But my cousin hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> you, you mean that man wasn't? No. <laughs> and he was... Total stranger. Oh. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Porter. <sighs> Doesn't look too bad. <laughs> that is what are you staring at? You really are a hero. 